there's something I say that you're you're not comfortable with, then I need you to, to tell me that. Now, and I would do the same. Okay, okay, Mike, I need to know something here, but why don't we just sit and do that? This is your chance, man. Do you not think you're going to feel built and feel better getting some of this off your chest as opposed to keeping it there forever? You know what I mean? I'll sit with you and do this. There's no issues with it at all. Like I say, I have no problem sitting with you, man. Why don't we just find a starting point and we'll do it? Okay? We'll take our time. And if you want to drink a water or something else, um, we'll do it. But let's let's sit and deal with this. Okay, let's sit you and I and deal with this and talk about what to, what's happened here. All right? You can do it, man. You can do this. All right? I'll sit with you. Mike, I will sit with you. Okay? If, if someone, if, if you've been manipulated into this, I'll sit with you. Okay? But you need to be straight with me and I'll be straight with you. If I say something that isn't right, you need to clarify it. Okay? But let's sit and do this. Nothing let's try it. what I'm going to say. How do you figure that? Nothing is going to matter what I say. Why do you think nothing will matter, Mike? Because it won't. Can, can you give me a reason? Why you don't think it will matter? It just won't matter. You don't think I'll believe you? can it not make a difference? This is your chance, man. We can show, hey, we're in talking to Mike. He was given a chance to say his side, and here's what he said. All right, what's the downside to it? Right? I don't see one. I really believe that. I mean, you've, uh, you have some intimate details of what happened here, okay? And you have some intimate details of who's involved in what. Why keep them inside? There's a number of ways we can look at this, okay? Why don't we look at, we do the right thing for, for some of the people involved, and including yourself. This is your chance, man, all right? Because you're gonna sit and stew forever. You say, no, oh, I should have said this, or shouldn't I have said that, right? It's up to you. I mean, I've got situations where I wish I'd have told somebody something that I didn't, and I regret it my whole life, okay? And it's situations with family members where you should have said your piece, or you should have kept your mouth shut, but we all have those experiences. But this is your chance to say your piece, all right? And I think you and I should take that chance. I think you and I should just sit and have that discussion. How is it going to get worse, right? It can't, all right? You're already uh, you're already sitting in here facing this situation, facing these uh, um, these charges. How does it get worse? It doesn't. But your side is important, all right? And I'm certainly willing to uh, to listen to it. There's a couple things that I think that uh, you can shed some light on. I really do. Um, I've been, you know, discussing your thoughts and this and how this spun out of control. But why don't we try it? Why don't you and I have a discussion here? Why don't you test me? Let's discuss something. See where it goes. If you're not comfortable with it, then we won't talk about it anymore. But why don't we try it? And then I'll sit and say, well, what was the downside to that? This is your chance, Mike. This is it. All right. You can. There's nothing else you can do for these people. All right. You've done all you can to save these people. You've done all you can to help them. Right. And obviously, to an extent, someone's put you in this position. Right. And we need to deal with that. You want me to tell you things I didn't do, so I, so I can get locked up for the rest of my life for this. I don't want you to tell me anything you did not did not do. No. I want you to explain to me, um, well, number one, I want the truth. But I want you to explain to me um, how this happened. Right? How do you get involved in this? How does a guy, you know, over 28 years, not on the radar, how does he get involved in something like this? So that's that, well, that, that interests me. I'll say that. Um, but I'm also interested in, what, in, the, in the role that these other people have played. I'm very interested in that. Okay, because to get to the truth, we have to know the other players and their involvement in, in an accurate form. And like I say, if, uh, if, if you and I have something that we can talk about that, I'd be, I, I think we should. I think this is the time to do it. This is the only time to do it. But I'm absolutely interested in what you have to say, but I'm not interested in, in uh, seeing you uh, go through something that uh, if, if uh, like I say, that more more experienced criminals have, uh, have 
got you into. Where do you think we could start? What would make sense? A lawyer would make sense. Okay. And what would that make sense in what way? Let's, yeah, here's an idea. Can I, I'm going to ask you a question. What's your biggest fear or your biggest concern now that you've been charged with this? What's your biggest concern here? Losing my life. Okay. All right. Um, all right. And what? What? Uh, and when you say losing your life, what do you, what do you mean by that? So I don't. I don't want to speculate what that means. It means losing my life. It means not being able to have a life anymore. It means not taking care of my mom. It means not having to do the things that I do every day. It's that's more than fair, but I wanted to make sure I understood that. Um, all right. And what would your mother want you to do in this situation? Get a lawyer. Did your mother ever ask if you did this? No. Okay. That's pretty important, isn't it? What would that tell you if your own mother asked if you did this, right? That would be pretty scary, wouldn't it? would be pretty bad. Um, I mean, you, you've spoke to a lawyer earlier. I know you've, uh, you, you've mentioned it here now. Are you looking at, at to negotiating something, or what is your what is your thought that way? I think a lawyer would let me know of all my options. Okay. And a lawyer would would look out for my interest, whereas you're not looking out for my interest. Okay. And okay. And a lawyer can tell me every possible scenario. Mm -hmm. how, how do you figure? Uh, I need you to be straight with me. Like, how do you figure I'm not looking? Because you, you work for the police. Yeah, I do. That's true. So yeah. I'm sorry, but you don't you're not looking out for my interest. Um well, I could see why you'd say that. Um but and let's but let's break that down a bit though. Let's okay. Obviously I do work for the police. Um but what have I said that really hasn't made any sense? <laughs> All right. Okay. You, what, what do and, you think? And it's your job to get me to tell you things. That's yeah, your job. It can't be, yeah. Like, yeah. You're not, you're not, where it's a lawyer's job, a lawyer's job yeah. is to help the scenario the best that he can. Yes. That's not your job. No, nope, my job is, well, you're no, getting my, paid for something else. I'm getting paid to, get to find out what the truth is. No question. I'm getting paid to, but at the same time, um, I'm not sitting here thinking, well, if you say something that's not in your best interest, right? Because when I sit and say credibility is important, right? Credibility is important. When I sit and say that telling your version now. Um, You're the first person who will take whatever I say mm -hmm. and, and, and use it however you want. No, I wouldn't. Be. No, because that wouldn't be up to me. I'll take what you say. And it goes on a uh, it goes on the on the uh, video, mm -hmm. but I don't sit and take it and twist it around and some is not. I mean, if what you say is the truth and matches with what the evidence is, what what's the concern, right? And that's like I say. Uh, and here's my observation, and you, you feel free to correct me. You and I have talked. As soon as I go anywhere near talking about, uh, you know, if I went to mention a monster or pulver, you get really mad, right, almost sick to your stomach uh, about the situation, maybe you're even upset with me, okay, so, and it's very consistent, so what's that tell me? You're not a monster, right, I know that, I've told you that, but you have to understand um, this situation, okay, it's a missing girl who's no longer with us, okay, we have to deal with this, all right, um, we've had discussions about, uh, Maybe people that uh, that are involved in this or something like that. Um, why would we not get that out in the open and deal with that, right? There's no downside to that. If, if there's something that we need to do, if you're if you sit and make a comment and say, "Well, Tara did this or Tara said that," why would I not follow that up, right? However, if you and I sit here and break this down piece by piece, and you say, "Well," 
I have issues with this concern here because if you follow it up, it's going to show this, then that's fine. Then you and I explain it. So if there's a piece of information you give me and say, well, I don't want you following that because here's why, then I'll, then I'll deal with you. Okay? If you want something from me, um, then you need to ask me what it is that you want, and then I can explain how that fits in and what I can or can't do for you. Okay? Keeping in mind, as I do this and talk to you, everything that I say and do, I'm accountable for. Okay? Uh, I can't just walk around talking to people and say whatever I feel like saying. Okay? I can't do that. Nobody can. That's not, we don't live in a, in a country like that. Okay? So if there's something that you're not comfortable or you put a caveat to something that you say, then just say it. I'm telling you this, but here's what you need to know to go with it. Does that make any sense at all? I want to know what this girl Terry said. Um, okay. She acknowledges that uh, she uh, she grabbed Tori and brought her to your car. That it was your wishes. That you sent her there with certain things that you were looking for in a victim. And she took her. And you guys drove on the highway and did the Home Depot thing, which I talked about. Left the Home Depot. A secluded area. Uh, you had sexual relations with Tori, and Tori was killed. So, like I say, Mike, when I say I'm interested in your side, I think you can understand why. Okay, if you're in with some uh, bad people. This is your time, man. This is as good as it gets, unfortunately. All right? This is it. And, uh, um, I mean, I can get into more detail if you want, but in a nutshell, that's a polite way of saying what the allegations are, okay? That's a polite way of saying what you're up against. And that's why when I sit and bring in these, you know, these other uh, ideas and comparisons, now you, should, now you know where I get it from, okay? Because I've been involved in many of these. And who are all these other people who are arrested? Who are these other people who were arrested? Uh, actually, I shouldn't say, I gotta be careful because the one, the one that's detained is probably gonna get released, okay? Um, but Terry's not getting released, okay? Um, there has not been a follow up for um, Tara, is not complete, uh, I can say that, and Rodney's not complete either, all right? Uh, that's not done. But the stuff that's happened today um, has kind of taken all the resources and focused on that, right? Because now your car is uh, seized. Um, they got to get all the paperwork ready for your, your, your and uh, her uh, court dates now. Um, and now they have to go follow up with some of the other people that have been implicated uh, for having different amounts. So some people um, uh, were told about this. Terry had told some people about this stuff, so they have to be dealt with. Actually, I've never asked you who you told, and I haven't even asked you that yet. But, um, but if there's stuff, if there's if there's other uh, people here.
happening, man? What's your thoughts? To all my friends. Pardon me? Who happens to all my friends? In what way? The people way? who I know. The people in my life. What? What happens to them in what way? Just what happens? Well, my thoughts are, like I said earlier, Mike, I think uh, they think the worst until they know them. That's why I'm asking you this stuff, man. People are going to think the worst. These are serious allegations. When I talked about what Terry said, I sugarcoated it, right? I can sit and break it down in more intimate details, all right? But we need to deal with that. If there's other people involved, I'm willing to listen. But I gotta tell you, the evidence is very clear right now that this is a, a you and Terry show, all right? I'm willing to listen if there's others. But you just said there's other people who, who are implicated, other people who are, who are being charged with this. Did I say charged or arrested? I mean, you're, you may be holding up hope here that there's others who are going to come in and get the same charges as you, and that may be that might be my fault, and maybe I've uh, I haven't been clear enough. But as far as the abduction and and uh, death of uh, of Tori, it's just you and Terry man for that specific part. I need to be maybe I should have been more clear on that. Okay, and I can say I was I should did sugarcoat. Uh, um, I did sugarcoat, uh, you know, exactly what she said, but it is, it is a lot worse when she says it, so, as to what happened with, uh, with Tori. And that's, like I say, that's, that's, um, I can sit and give you, like I say, I can sit and give you the details of what uh, she's indicated that uh, was done to, to, uh, to Tori, um, and maybe that's my job, maybe I should, but at the same time, you with dignity and respect as well and like I say um, that's why I'm interested in what you have or what you have to say here because uh, this thing's out of control okay it's something happened here all right that just isn't quite right for you to go to zero to 120 miles an hour like that something's happened okay we don't just start out here going through a car when we're 14 to be involved in the abduction and death of a young girl okay that's not right so something's caused that, and that's what I've tried to discuss with you here. But maybe I should have been more clear in relation to the disappearance and the death of Tori. It's you and Terry. Okay, there's some outlying issues surrounding this stuff, and uh, some drug use and stuff. But for the focus of this girl, uh, it's you and Terry. And she said her piece. So that's why you and I. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I watched uh, when they spoke to Terry, so I do know what she said. I did watch it, but I wasn't the one that spoke to her. Um, it was one of the other officers on the investigation. But like I said, I said I would come in. I've been involved with it from a behavioral sciences standpoint for a while, so I said I'll come in and talk to you. Can I watch it? Want to watch what she said? Mm -hmm. Which parts? I don't know. What she's, what she's implicating me. Do you want me to queue up some of the parts? Sure. Okay, what part would you like? Just the part where she's saying this is me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can do that. Any other thoughts or anything else you'd like? Which parts do you want to hear? Do you want to hear right from the time that uh, they, uh, uh, well, you can show it right on the video, right from the time that 
to Tory's grab to the time you get to Home Depot or anyone here after that. Obviously she said it, I can't make that shit up, man. I wasn't in the car with you guys. All right, so obviously she said it, all right? And, if, and like I say, as we go along, video, uh, uh, video uh, corroborates it, so. I need a lawyer. No, you spoke to him. I need a lawyer. There's no issue. No, that, was, lawyer. that wasn't about my lawyer. That was just somebody who gave me advice. Do you have a lawyer? I don't have one yet. Okay. Do you know uh, anybody who does? No. Or do you have somebody in mind? No. Okay. I have, to, I have to talk to my family. That's your biggest concern is what your family's going to think? I'm very concerned about what my family's going to think. Personal question, does your family know anything about any Oxycontin use by you? I don't know. So, then that, so just the Oxycontin thing's going to be a bit of a shock? stuff to, to explain them. Are you comfortable telling me how long you've been on oxys? Taking painkillers for years. <laughs> Am I even on the right track saying that oxy's caused this, or did you find that offensive and that I'm, it was just something that was maybe going to happen anyways? discussions here where you've thrown out uh, other names and stuff maybe to test me to see where I'll go but I'm willing to listen to anything that you have to say and I, I mean I don't have to I mean we can all just simply walk away and then you're the one stuck with the problem right and uh, but I got to admit uh, I'm, uh, I'm surprised uh, um, that when we get involved in this that you know someone who's had really no issues their whole life with the police is involved in this. I mean, so, I mean, that's, I mean, that's reality. The guy I told you about Toronto had no, the two I told you about tonight, the one in Toronto, the one from up north, they had no problems with the police either in the past. And they went and got involved in something like this, so it happens all the time. However, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was a little surprised. And I gotta tell you, when you start digging around with stuff on Mike, there's not a whole hell of a lot out there, to be quite honest. From a law enforcement standpoint, there's no, you don't have very many skeletons in your closet. I gotta tell you that. And, because uh, if you did, I'd probably bring them up, right? And you don't. But the evidence is, is the evidence. It's very clear. And we need to, uh, we need to deal with it. And if you did something because you thought it was the right thing to do, because um, you're on oxys, then that's, that's left. What's this process? What happens? What happens next? Um, after you and I are done talking, you go back to your cells. Um, tomorrow morning, you'll have what's called a, uh, you'll be brought into court, and the charges will be read to you again, and there'll be a discussion if you uh, get out of custody for, uh, for bail, and then they may schedule a bail hearing to determine that. And then from 
there. It, uh, it's a matter of uh, where it goes from the courts. The investigation will go on for a little while yet. There's a couple things that, as I told you, that need to be done. Um, and then in the, the big picture, you're, I mean, you're facing these charges. to explain the allegations, right? You've got to explain what it is that uh, the evidence is showing. And like I said, I've sugarcoated. I haven't uh, even got uh, down in, into all of it. I'm just uh, see, doing it uh, as an opportunity for you and I to, to discuss it. The less evidence that you and I talk about, the more credibility you have. You can say to make it worse. There isn't. It is what it is, man. <laughs> yeah, it's true. What can you say to make this worse? Nothing. Right? Unless you're going to tell me there's more victims. Other than that, there's nothing you can say that's going to make this any worse. Again, because I've sugar-coated it. go out to court tomorrow? Um, well, you'll be in the, uh, in the jail. You won't be here. You'll be in the, in the, in the local jail. And then from there, you, uh, you have your court appearances after that. Say this, but really the facts are the facts. The evidence is the evidence. I'm not trying to be a smart ass when I say there's nothing you can say to make this worse. But there really isn't. There's nothing that you can say that's gonna knock me off my chair with surprise. And I would be amazed if you said something that wasn't supported by the case facts. It's all investigation from there. Um, like I say, it's and the worst part is I mean, yeah, there's steps you've taken to kind of cover your tracks a bit, but as we mentioned earlier, you're not um, an experienced criminal, and that lends to, to errors being made and evidence being gathered that implicates you, so it's nothing, don't be offended by that, that's reality, um, you're not an experienced criminal, and that, you know, goes to some of the other things that we've talked about. some of the other issues there's no no issue that way but I'd rather if you and I are going to talk about it we just sit and talk about it if you have a question of me you ask it uh, if I have a clarifying question of you I ask it and if you have an issue with it you say I don't get an issue with that one and explain well, okay here's why I can't ask that I have no issue with any of that so you're not going to offend me you're not going to make me mad or anything like that I have no issues with that way at all 
do with this yesterday's work. Hey, Scott, how are you? Fine, right. I understand uh, Mike here wanted to see what uh, Terry Lynn had to say. Mike, Terry Lynn's still speaking to my partner, okay? This is the girl you killed, all right? She's not missing anymore, she's dead. Terry Lynn was asked today if she wanted to call a lawyer four times. She said no, all four times. She went through two boxes of Kleenex, all right? She says on the 8th of April, Wednesday the 8th of April 2009, at 3.30 in the afternoon, you drop her off at Pavey, south of Fife, south of the public school, where Tori walks out of. You tell her to get a girl, and you want her young. She walks up the street, you drive up to the old age home, and you park your car. She walks up to Tori. Tori's nice to her. She trusts her. She holds her hand for a little bit. She walks up the street with her. Terry Lynn tells her about her little dog, gets her across the street to your car, opens the back door. Tori doesn't like it anymore. She pushes her in the car. And you start driving. She says she's freaking out. She says she's worried about you. She's scared about what you're going to do. She says you guys hit the 401. You start driving to Guelph. You park outside a house. You go in for a little while. You come out with some drugs, she thinks. And you drive to the Home Depot. You park at the end of the parking lot. You tell her it's her time her turn to get out of the car. You tell her to go in there, you give her some cash because you don't want to use your debit card so you don't track it. She goes in there, she gets garbage bags like she's told to do and she comes back out. Then you go driving and you pull into a farmer's field right across from a house to the point where you're even asking her if anybody can see you. And what does she do? She says she goes for a walk because she doesn't want to see what happens. And then she comes back, and you're not sitting in the front seat anymore, Mike. You're sitting in the back seat. And she's not liking what she sees, so she walks away again. Then she comes back, and you make her hold one of those garbage bags while you put some of your clothes and her jacket and a hammer in the garbage bag. Then you drive to a gas station. She never sees Tori again. You drive to that gas station, you get out, you wash up, you dump the bag. You drive back to Woodstock. That's Terry Lynn's story, Mike. That's Terry Lynn's story while she bawls her eyes out through two boxes of Kleenex. And I ask her four times, hey, you want to call a lawyer? She says, I don't need to call a lawyer. I feel so bad about what happened. I just want to tell you all about it. That's what you're up against. Terry Lynn's a liar. Well, you're the only person that can tell us that, buddy. I just did. You gotta be careful, like, because some of the shit she said is backed by uh, not just video but other evidence, but also some of the um, the explanations that she gave as well are verified. Um, that's uh, that's a little more graphic than I said it, but uh, um, yeah, there is some stuff that she says that is true. There's no question. I'm not gonna say, say it's not. But, How uh, old are you, Mike? Twenty eight years old. You want to tell us your side of the story? Get rid of your fucking security blanket and start being a man. Because it's not going to be her semen that we find on her body. When we look at the areas underneath the parts of the seat that you cut out, we're going to find her blood. Do you know how blood works? Do you know about red blood cells, white blood cells? White blood cells are thinner. They look like spit when they're separated from red blood cells. They're the ones that seep through into the foam. That's what we get the DNA from. Skin cells from her rubbing up and down against your seats in your car. Tori Stafford is all over your car. All over it. And Terry Lynn explains everything that she knows we're going to find. You're explaining nothing. So I don't give a fuck if you say one more word or tell you the truth. All right, we're done then. Well, I'm done with you anyway. Okay. This officer here is trying to understand what the hell you're going through. I don't care. Who are you? I I'm the lead investigator here. Okay. Okay? Terry Lynn's full of shit. Well, that's going to be a funny thing for you to say in court, isn't it? No. Because how's the DNA going to be full of shit, Mike? 
Huh? How's the biologist from the Center of Forensic Sciences going to be full of shit? How's the pathologist that examines her body going to be full of shit? Explain that to me. I'll be careful, Mike. That's a dangerous road to go on. But there's something you and I can clarify with what she said, then let's clarify it. But we can't just sit here with a blanket statement that she's full of shit because there is some things that's truthful. And then by you saying that, it makes it takes away your credibility. So we got to be very careful with that. I'm done with them. Yeah. This officer's got a job to do, Mike. He's got a different job than I do. For my investigation, you keeping your mouth shut is the best thing can happen. So keep on keeping it shut. Okay. Well, you know more than I told you anyway. Um, it wasn't quite as eloquent as I would have put it, but anyways. Um, this is, um, I mean, these people have been working on this stuff for over a month, right? So some of these people are working from 6 in the morning to 1 in the morning ever since then. Some of them have one day off, so there's a little bit of uh, concern in but I gotta tell you, like you say, you know, it's just sitting saying a blanket thing about to tear this is not you're not doing yourself any good. Um, at the same time, um, what he's saying is right. Like I did watch watch what she was saying and she was very emotional, there's no question. Um, and she did go through Kleenex, there's no question of that. Um, and she was upset but and, and there's stuff that she said that I mean was clearly known ahead of time. By the investigators and their stuff that was said that uh, by her saying it later proved out to be confirmed other ways. So don't, uh, um, no, you know, just can't say don't. You can do whatever the hell you want, but just be careful going off that road. I mean, if uh, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to try and uh, back it. And like I said, there's no magical cleanser out there that cleans DNA out of a car. Um, just you and I sitting in here, Mike. Your DNA is in this room. My DNA is in this room. That's that's reality, right? Could be saliva perspiration, we may have shed skin, hair, whatever, so um, you just can't wipe it out. And I, and I can sit and tell you over the years of things that people have tried, different types of fuels, oils, oils, um, people have set fires to their cars lightly to try and get rid of stuff, um, but yeah, if that stuff gets uh, soaked right in, which, which it will, uh, you've got an issue. Um, and there's even actually a couple more things that actually he didn't say, whether he did, why he didn't, I have no issues on that. That doesn't change my opinion from our discussion, to be quite honest. I mean, they've got their opinions, and obviously they're getting sick of listening to me, so, um, so they've come in and said their piece. But like I say, I've got no, uh, I'm not pissed with you, so I'm not to. Uh, but like I say, this is your chance. This is your chance to, uh, to say your piece. And uh, I'm sitting here willing to listen to it. I've already told you my opinion, right? I've told you my role, right? My role is, is behavioral sciences. My role is to assess threat. And I've already told you I don't think you're going to go out and kill somebody else. So I've already told you. I've given you my side. Um, but like I say, it's up to you. Like I said, I have no issue sitting here discussing this stuff. But you need to understand what you're up against. Well, he just told me not to say anything more, so... It's up to you. He didn't say, you don't say anything that's against, what he, said, though, he, so. he doesn't want you to talk to him. But that's fine. I have, I'm still interested in listening to you. But I have no issue with it. Like I say, if there's a way we can explain it, then I'll sit and listen to it. If it's oxygen is the problem here, then we might as well start up that road. All right? If that's what's happened. And you've, uh, you've taken too many oxys and then went and grabbed her up. Then let's deal with that now. All right? Because, like I say, some of the stuff she said is already being confirmed. And some of this you know is confirmed anyways, because you already knew some of the evidence was out there. So you know that that's already reality. Um, but you also have to understand, when I talked earlier about the other cases where the people sat here, acknowledge what they did and apologize, you, you can't even, you never even heard of those cases. Because the whole thing just flew right out of the radar after that. All right? There's a couple things that we should probably uh, probably discuss while I'm here, but I mean, you know, the 
risks that uh, I mean are attached to having her in your car going up that highway, right? So you know there's a good chance that there's witnesses for that. So there's certain things that you can explain, and uh, some of it might be a little more difficult. But say I have no issue sitting in here going through it with you. You want to talk about the part of the school where she's grabbed? We can discuss that and see what your thoughts are there. started talking to trashy people, I don't know. Well, you seem smarter than this. Something happened. Right? You've heard me say it 50 times, probably. Something happened here, man. You don't fly on the radar for 28 years. So what happened? It's hard. Is it hard just to even yeah. talking about it? I'm not saying anything. Why? Because because of the officer, because of what the lawyer said. Now it's everything. I just don't. I don't. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not comfortable saying anything. What's your concern about saying something? What do you think is going to happen next? I'm not sure. I don't know. Someone runs in here and starts barking. I'm Is, like you say, that's frustration of people that haven't slept for eight for, for days, right? They've all missed family engagements during that time, right? Well, maybe then he should have a coke and a smile and try to talk to me later. I don't think he will. I don't think those guys will. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here, but like you say, it's uh, my uh, my role is a little bit different, and uh, I don't think you'll have to worry about those guys coming around seeing you. Um, and again, it all goes back to um, there's emotional. It's a, um, I can't sugarcoat it. Like, I've sugarcoated some, but it's a serious situation. We can't sit and I know it's very really serious. You know, it's, uh, um, like I say, when we talked about it before, and uh, if, that's, if that's what it was, that you used some oxys and did this, then that's fine. Like I say, we'll deal with it. But nobody's going to get, you know, no one's going to care two years from now. That's what you say, right? Because you've had two years to think about it and say, oh, well, this is the best way to go. And it's not going to come across as believable, like you say. Well, Terry came in and said some of the stuff she said, and then some of it she said. an incredible well, person. Well, and the problem with that is, is, uh, is when she starts saying stuff that can be verified, you know, it becomes very compelling, right? And uh, that's what's like I say, that's what's important. And uh, not only because it would be different if she said stuff and it was full of lies, but that's not what happened. And, uh, and it's, it's like I say, what she says is compelling because it can be matched. See, a lot of what's going to solve this case is video because video is so prominent now than it was a few years ago and uh, technology is better and, uh, again there's some compelling things uh, as she has said but the fact that your car was on that video long before um, and it hadn't been released um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff to verify it and that's before they go and analyze your car explain how her uh, you don't have the relationship uh, with that kid to have her in your car prior to this so um, you know 
understand what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. Okay. All right. Um, do you understand where I'm coming from, though? Why I want to get this out? You just want me to say whatever. You just want me to say things. So. It's in. It's open and closed. No. So it's over and done with. That's it. This is how it is. Nothing more to talk about. No, actually, because I, you know, actually, that's not. That's you're, that's fair. That's a very fair statement, actually. But, um, but I got to tell you, in this case, it's not. It doesn't matter. If you and I never never meet, if the police don't even interview about this, it doesn't change what the evidence is, right? But the reality of it is. It is an unusual case. It's an unusual circumstance for someone uh, like yourself who has no previous real criminal experience, has no um, real past in relation to uh, any type of sex offending, who has no you know, bizarre behavior, right? You're not out torturing kids or doing anything bizarre. No bizarre behavior. Let's be realistic. There's no bizarre behavior really documented on here. And to, for you to be involved and have a role like this in this situation is unusual. So yeah, I'm compelled and I'm interested to listen to what you have to say. But it, does it open and shut this case? No, because um, as you can tell, they really don't care that I'm in here talking to you, right? Their feelings is more important to them and getting their side out and, and uh, you know raising their voice at you is more important to them than having me sit in here with you. I mean, they've made that pretty clear. So like I said, I'm interested because of the why. Because it's, it's different. I've got to tell you, it's different. And, uh, but at the same time, I'm going to say this again. Your credibility is important, and you have to understand where I'm coming from. When and I don't know if you believe me or not, but I need you to think about it at least. When I say people think the worst, without knowing the facts, that's reality. And whether you've chose to do that or ever done that in your life, And we said, what happens is people start making up their own reasons as to why things happen, right? And start their own stories and their own rumors. So you and I sitting here explaining, holy shit, this is, and maybe you can't. I mean, maybe you decided that you were going to try this with a kid and there's no real logical explanation. That's why you can't tell me. Maybe that's reality. Or maybe you're embarrassed about a drug habit that uh, got away from you. But I'm telling you, you know, as sure as I'm sitting here, like, people think, and you know that, you've heard me say it, but if you stop and think, people think the worst. Let them think what they're gonna think. What's that? Then let them think what they're gonna think. And they may. I mean, see, they're gonna think the worst. There's no no question about that. All right. People will think the worst until they know the truth. So, um, and like I said, that's why I'm sitting with you. So, if this is an oxy thing that could have hand, that's why I was prepared to listen to. It. Like, if it's not, then that's fine too. Right? Then, um, then it's something else. Then it's an uncontrollable sexual urge that people have. I mean, that's that's. The, and all that? I'm just, I just don't feel comfortable talking about it. So you're prepared then to just leave it like this and you're going to ride it out from here and see where it goes? Yep. You think that's the best way to do it? I don't know. I've never been in this chair before. I don't know. Questions of me? No. Need something to eat? I wouldn't really care if I need something to eat. Why would you say that? Because you don't. I wouldn't ask if I didn't care. I'm here for your job. You know? Nope. I could have walked out. I don't have to ask you because you got a phone right here. Right? But the reality of it is, I know that you're going to go 
back and sit and sleep or do whatever for a while, and you'd be better to do it on a full stomach. That's all it is to it, man. But I don't have to ask you if you want food, but I am prepared to get you food. Oh, I can eat, and then you can say, well, look, he had an appetite. This is how he must have been feeling. Oh, he oh. drank his tea. This is how he must be feeling. Forget uh, the fact he's just starving. And uh, You're reading too much into it, man. No. No, that's not what it is at all. I offered you something to eat because I thought if you're hungry, you can eat it. I don't care if you eat it or not, right? I mean, it's up to you. It doesn't matter to me if you eat or you don't eat. And that doesn't go in anywhere in any of your reports. Hmm. What's that? That I ate or not ate. No, because it's on the video. It doesn't matter if you eat or not. I don't have to write any report. Dude. My report doesn't say if you ate or not. My report says what we talked about. That's all. Right? I don't... Uh, no, that's reality, man. I ask people that. But, no, I don't think say it's... Uh, your appetite at this point doesn't matter, really. I come in here, I sat with you, explain to you what the evidence was. Um, had a discussion. Actually, I don't think there's any animosity between us. Um, so we had a discussion about what the case facts are, and that was it. So it doesn't matter to me if you, if you eat or not, but it was a legitimate offer. If you want something, I'll arrange for you to get it. There's no issues that way. But Do you want something to Something to eat, yes. Alright. We'll get you something to eat. Something plain, something simple and plain. What were you thinking? Something, anything plain. Super simple or? Sure. Alright. I'm allergic to mushrooms and onions. I think it's some type of allergy, is it? Sorry? What type of allergies that make you go into uh, um, the, throw up or anything? The, the mushrooms make me pretty ill. And the onions just make me nauseous. Okay. Alright, look at me. Take it easy. Mm
Mike. Remember me? Hey? Mm -hmm. Gord? Mm -hmm. Remember me? We sat down mm -hmm. for about half an hour the other day mm -hmm. on Friday. And we sat down at your kitchen table. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we got to know each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. I got to know a little bit about you. About your family situation. You know, we got talking about how long you've been around here for. What you've been going through.